this is Cheryl Wilson, abstract artist, and for those that are new to my channel, I am an abstract artist and I do assorted types of videos where I do full paintings, sometimes just processes, sometimes just talk about what I'm doing during the week, and um, so I hope you give this a try, or as I think across the pond, uh, give it a go. Those that are returning, again, thank you so much for being a part of my life leaving me wonderful messages and I just, it touches my heart. I've gotten to know some of you. I also wanna thank those that have subscribed to my channel. I forget what we're up to now, but I think it's like um, maybe 10 or 11 or something like that. There's a handful of just supporters. You're not just supporters. You are supporting me and for that, I love you for that. And then there's the artisans that are on a journey with me. And um, I just put out a video this last week on the first one on finding your artistic voice. And that's a lot of fun because it is a concept that I've been using to understand why I like circles, why I like a lot of blank on my canvas, why I even like to leave a lot of white, why I like moody paintings. All that has a reason from my past, some of it's from my childhood, but you don't know that until you know really why you're attracted to what you're attracted to. And uh, I go into depth, and so if you're interested in that, in, in about two weeks when people have a chance to do the little assignment, we're gonna go into the second part that will try to connect it together. And then we are going into full swing this next week on composition, which brings me to today's video, which we're gonna talk a little bit about composition. And the way I explain composition in my membership and the way I explain it to you, um, and this is a process that I'm actually learning, is there are traditional concepts out there on um, like regular like photographers or painters use, but when you're an abstract painter, and especially if you're a non-objective or um, abstract re um, uh, expressionist, which there are no really meant to be objects in there. Some of those traditional ways of uh, figuring out your um, composition are a little bit harder. So I've been looking at other ways to explain composition and they, um, the ones that working for me and I go into more detail in um, the membership video, not to talk a lot about that, but this is kind of new for me, so I'm excited about it. But I do want to also thank um, Lee Hudson. I hope you don't mind me saying my name. Um, I went to the post office this morning, and um, in there was a pet, well, little story behind it. I think it got, the slip got stuck in the mailbox below mine, so... For a couple weeks, I think, before that person realized that there was a slip in there telling them they had a package and that it wasn't for them, they put the note, gave it back to the people on the postmaster people, whatever you call them, post people, put it in my box. And so I went back this morning <coughs> to talk to them and they um, actually found my package for me. And it's this beautiful painter's um, smock. It's like a dress. Let me show this to you. It's full length. So I can get a lot dirty. It's got these wonderful pockets. If I wanted to, you know, be kind of cutesy, I could put a little knot in it, you know, but I haven't got any paint on it yet because I just got it today. So <laughs> Give me another hour and I will get it covered with paint. But um, thank you, Lee, for this beautiful gift. Um, I love it. I will cherish it. And it's made of a beautiful material. And I'll ask her, it, you know, if she does this for people. Um, if she just did this for 
you know, her friends or she does this for a business and I'll let you know. And then I want to thank um, three special people and that is Sherry, Kelly, and Ann. Now you've left me thanks and um, uh, several times um, left me thanks. Um, it's a little, I guess, um, a thanks button with a heart by it that um, you've been kind enough to just say yes, you appreciate my videos and I'm so humbled by that. It's not a necessary thing. I know a lot of you are artists and you know, you're struggling to put your money into your art but when someone does something extra like that, I want to thank you. It's, it's just very meaningful to me. So, um, again, thank you. And the wonderful notes that you are leaving me. Um, uh, several have become my friends, and I just enjoy that. So, let's get over. This is the one of the paintings. And it's done on, I'll show you, it's art boards that people would normally take out and do plein air on. But um, it's a combination. Of course, you see I've put some of my marks in there and I put some collage. But it's done with alcohol inks into the acrylic. And I did a video uh, some time back where someone uh, sent me a separate message and said, so hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, I, I have to tell you that I decided to look up the actual wording for these little bottles, the Lumineer and the Mixative, and they're not alcohol inks. I apologize. So when you see me in the demo, because the demos are done and I didn't want to redo the paintings, but when I talk about the Mixative, it's a fast drying, acid-free ink that is used with uh, to be combined with alcohol inks. And I did combine it with alcohol inks, but I did use it a little bit differently. And the Lumineer is, it says it's a light-bodied, lustrous, metallic acrylic paint. So the two of them are not alcohol inks. Um, so forgive me. So when I get to the uh, actual demonstration and I call them alcohol inks, you can just snicker at me and um I just, I had to put this out here because I didn't want you to think I um, didn't know what I was talking about. Well, I didn't, but now I do. Ed, could you do another one? Um, you know, some questions about it and they wanted to, um, to try it themselves. And I hadn't uh, got them out again, but there's like three um, brands that I had. Um, one is more of a lighter alcohol then there's a couple that are more metallic and you'll see how they react but they have a little bit different reaction to, with the acrylics that you may not get any other way which i think is what's so fun um one of the metallic um was thick enough that even though there's a lot of water on the canvas panel or the canvas board the the um they didn't spread out one really spread out and you can see the blooming um then when i put the metallic down um one of the times it sunk down in the paint then when i used the palette knife it came up but you'll see some webbing um that is beautiful and i'm using a palette knife i don't think i use a brush on any part of it it's a palette knife but you'll see what some of it does but it's I don't think I'd do it on a larger painting because it is not um, something that you may see, but I think doing it on a smaller painting, um, you can get some techniques that are unique that will really be shown. And of course, you know, I love the tonal paintings. I love the moody paintings. I love black and white and then adding, um, you know, additional things into the black and white. And with this, I'm adding some gunmetal, um, thicker alcohol inks and some um, gold. So let's hop over to my art table and I'll show you the making of one of them and then I'll show you the other two. And um, then I hope that you you know, give it a try because it's, um, it's, it's fun. And it's another, if you've got some alcohol inks, um, it's, it's a way to add something additional. So let's hop on over there and, um, see what I did. 
I also want to pop in here to tell you about my week. Um, my painting, my messy homework, math homework, finally went out the door to the collector that bought it. Um, they're not local. They flew in and pick it up. And um, it was it was kind of fun because I had two local artists that actually came over to say goodbye to it, to see it one more time. It's just a beautiful painting and to recreate the moody color that's in it. Um, I've tried a couple times. It's its own uniqueness. And um, I didn't film it when I was making it. So sometimes having a camera on when you're doing something is beneficial because if you you don't remember the colors you use. Um, you gotta work hard to recreate it, but it's it's got its own voice and it went off to the owner. There's a story behind it trying to get off to the owner a couple times and then finally it did, uh, but I won't go into that. If you know, you know, but um, it's, um, it's on its way and I was real happy for that painting to finally um, make its way um, back or over across the country to um, a place that I know it's going to hang beautifully. Okay, so this whole time I thought I was recording while I was making this painting, but I wasn't. So I'm going to show you, um, it, this is still drying. When I went over to turn the camera off to dry this, I noticed that... Um, I didn't press the record button. So this is the painting that is drying and I'm gonna talk more about that in a second, but let me show you. This is the first one I did. And what I'm using in this is a little bit different. I've done a video in the past where I use acrylics and alcohol inks together. And, and then there's um, acrylic inks, but I'm gonna use alcohol inks in this. And I had someone recently contact me and ask me about how they work together. Well, I'm going to do a demo. And so I'm going to be using high flow. I'm going to be using just regular, um, this is a triart titanium white thick paint. I'm going to be using water, a palette knife. I'm using some charcoal pencils. And then I'm going to bring in some alcohol inks. And I have Lumineer, I have a Mixative, and I have Pinata of different colors. So the border paper or canvas, this may be a little bit unique to the uh, paper I'm using because we put this somewhere so it continues to dry. I'm using this mixed media artboard by Canson. It's, this is a 12 by 16 and they're boards. So, you know, you can um, mat these, frame these, um, but I got them to work outside. They're actually meant for plein air but I think they're great also for other things. So the first two, when I created the painting, um, which you can see some of the mess here from creating the one that I thought I was showing you, um, I created vertical. I'm gonna do this horizontal for you. These can all go together. So I started by, let me just, on this one, I don't know kind of what I'm gonna do. I started by using uh, water, and on the other one I used charcoal, so I'm gonna do the same thing. And if you do charcoal with water, um, because the water's soluble, you're gonna get these beautiful marks. Okay, and now I'm gonna do, like with the others, I'm gonna do some high flow black. And the other one, I spread it, but this one I'm gonna go ahead and put some high flow white into. Now these kind of just lay on top of each other. So I'm going to take the palette knife and just 
they're going to mix together and make a beautiful gray. Let me just bring that up there. All right. So this is a perfect time to add in some of the alcohol inks. I'm going to start with um, black. Now this is not a high flow, so they're going to they're going to sit differently. There's a, like a little bit of a blooming going on, but they didn't they didn't like spread out with with a you know how the uh, high flow does. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my palette knife over and it's it they're almost like a a gummy feeling. I'm going to go ahead and do a spray on it just to see they don't spread. They're more of a um I guess a gummy when I spread my knife over it. There's a beautiful effect that happens. There's like a webbing if I press hard enough on it. But it's um it doesn't move as flowing as the high flows. So it is a different type of a um, paint or um, medium to use in your art. I am going to now, um, I'm gonna add some more white. I'm gonna do that in a couple stripes. But I'm gonna add in some of this gun metal. This is by Mixative. And I'm going to try the gunmetal maybe right down the middle of this white to see what it does. And before I even mix that in, I'm going to mix some, I'm going to take some gold and kind of put that around it, some of it within, some over here. Now, it's doing an awful lot of blooming when the two together are coming in contact with each other. Over here, it just kind of sat on top of the acrylic paint. But over here, it got a really beautiful blooming effect. So they're reacting with each other. I, I don't like all of that because it's becoming kind of like a chaotic. I'm going to kind of move, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of move that around. And I'm going to leave some of that. Put some lines in here. I like that spot right there. Let's see, what else do I have? I used, okay, I'm going to use some metallic bronze because I used that in the others. So I may add that in here, and a couple swatches here. Now this is a very thick, this is by Luminesce. Most Luminesce seem to be thicker. So it's sitting right on top. Well, actually that sunk right in, but let's see what happens. It just kind of pulls. I don't know if the word gummy is the right word, but they, they have a little different effect when they mix. Some of you may notice I do a lot of voiceovers and that is because when I paint I get into my right brain and then talking while I'm painting is harder for me because I'm in my right brain and the left brain kind of goes away. I want it to. I want the right brain to speak. I may leave that. I like that. So now let's go in with some more of the, I don't like how that's taken over there. Let's go in with some of the charcoal. And this is kind of the same marks I put on the other painting. And I'm going to try to scratch through. Some of my famous writing. That was on the first one. So if I said before, and I mentioned this recently to someone that I've been working with, with their painting, is when you put something on the top, try 
to make sure it doesn't look like you, you, you want people to ask, what did you put last, basically? You don't want them to know that you just took charcoal and wrote on top. So even when I do marks, well, it's actually blending in well. When I do marks, I also will go and rub some of that out because I don't want it to be obvious what I added. Now I'm losing some of the white. Now I will go in when this is dry and add a big thing of white. Um, when I did on the last one that I didn't videotape because it was off, what I did, it was about here that I did it. I took a big palette knife, glob of white, and I think I'll put it here. And since it's wet, I'm going to go over that spot I thought I liked. And the alcohol inks are definitely giving it a little bit different reaction. It's almost like it's separating the paint in a way. I'm going to do some more of the bronze. Well, that kind of just spit it out. So let me, let me, it's, it comes out kind of gummy. Um, but that's just a word. Now that sunk down in. This one didn't sink in. So let's see. And let's move that to glob of white. So I'm going to let this dry so that I can go in and work some more on it. The last two, you'll see me tweak a little bit, but I want it to dry at this point. Morning has broken, my windows are open, want to feel the wind blow through my hair, which way do I follow, what happens tomorrow, I turn to the way sometimes I give up just want to be on my own even in the darkest times you give me hope so I lean on you when I'm lost my way I keep holding on Right, the three that I did and then the one that I actually videotaped for you are done um, the metallic really popped out when it dried it really popped out I'm loving that I just put a mat down to kind of give you an idea of what it would look like um, you certainly could just like mat this and put this behind glass or you could just probably mat this and put this on the frame because it is um, a canvas board but it's I'm, I'm really liking this I drew with a um, charcoal pencil uh, you know the word I like just a little bit more marks in here I added a piece of collage here and um, I'm calling this done I'll sign this and call this done of course it's got some of my favorite marks in here as far as composition goes, a couple things to look at is this spot here is bigger than this here. You want it to be um, different sizes. You want differences. The fact that I have a lot of lines going this way, um, I added some lines coming down this way. Of course, this piece is coming down. This collage piece brings it down. Um, since I had some of the white shapes, I added a larger 
white shape with paint. I have, um, since I have markings, I went ahead and added some scribble lines just to give a lot of different one. It has my marks in it. It's got a composition that kind of helps your eye flow through the painting. The background is primarily black, so it's the value of the whites that's going to pull you through the painting, and even this metallic um, is going to pull you down there. Of course, again, that's metallic bronze. It's one. Of the so there's that one. Um, the next one is it could it, I could spend some time working on this one. I um, am gluing down with some um, gloss gel. I've showed you this many times before. A piece of, now this is a paper, if you watched my video last week, this is a piece I made um, last week. So again, what I'm doing is I'm repeating things that I use in my art. So it's a cohesive body of work overall that I'm creating. And that's what I want. I want, when people look at my work, I want them to say, oh yes, that's Cheryl's work, I can tell. And a lot of that they can tell because you'll see some of my marks um, over and over again in my paintings. You'll see these same type of marks that I hand make. Um, one of the other things I want to do to this painting, I'm taking a look at it. Again, I've got this big solid background. I added in, um, clean this up a little bit. My brush is not 100% rinsed and clean, which is okay because the color I'm adding is almost like a gray tone. That's, that's okay. So I'm kind of just cleaning this up a little bit. Um, I added these marks here. They're smaller marks. Um, I do have some lines going here. So I have some uh, lines going uh, one direction and then the collage I added is going another direction. Since I added a lot of scribble on this last piece and as if as and you know that usually when I put scribble on here I will cover up parts of it so it doesn't look like you don't know what's the last thing you added so I may add some of that down here now I could what I'll probably do when this dries is bring the line up through there but I don't want to right now but I'm going to add the scribble down there um, I may want this white here to be more pronounced and then maybe some more up there. I have my white charcoal so I can write my word in it. Um, this almost is given the impression of some circles there. So at this point, is it done um, for now while it dries? But if you put the mat down, see right away when I put that mat down, I see where I may want to see these black lines here. I may want to take those and pull them down. And then, of course, slightly blot. So what that did was there were some black lines here, and I just brought it down further. And I may do that once this dries. I may do that with the pencil. So the lines that I have within the painting are going on top of this. So there's that push and pull back and forth between the lines you see that I added on top and then lines I covered up. Another thing I have on the other painting, 
course, I have a lot of line work in here, but I may just add three lines of white. Another thing that when I talk about in composition is um, if you do things in an odd amount, the eye finds it more pleasing. That's primarily true when you do like more of a representational, but you can also, in my opinion, bring it in to the abstract world. A lot of things I tell you um, are things I've experienced myself. If you have other experiences, I've learned from you. I used to call scraffito something I learned it wasn't. So I appreciate that someone told me um, the difference between scraffito and acemic writing. And then this last piece is, um, again, I've added, or I'm going to add, and this is odd numbers, down in here, it's, I mean, I like that, but it's kind of messy. Of course, that webbing's right there. But I have some more webbing right there, so I'm going to go in and add these handmade papers. There's a cohesiveness going here with the three paintings that I did by adding the gel. I mean, adding, again, I told you before, sometimes my right brain gets into the zone and I'm painting and my left brain, which is talking to you, um, gets lost. <laughs> That's all I can, all I can say. Now that will dry nice and clear. I messed that up a little bit, but you know what? I don't, I don't care. I, I like that. So let's let that dry. Um, what else do I want? I can go back and say, okay, some of the things I did in the other painting, let's repeat. Like, let's see if I can do some, I have some of the white lines here. Let's accentuate that. I like that. Um, I haven't really used a brush, brush marks in here, but I may want to make these more pronounced and then draw through them. Um, I had scribble in the other two. There's a little bit of light scribble down here. I had the white charcoal. So let me put my word in here. So maybe some circles. I may want to clean up a little bit. Could leave those in, but I can clean it up. So what, what started out as a painting with some acrylic and alcohol, and I have now added in some of my markings that are important to me, and brought these three pieces together, and again, it's, it's bringing in some of who I am as an artist. Some of these markings are markings you will see in many of my paintings. And so I'm going to let that dry, but I think it's, I think it's pretty good. Um, yeah, I like this. Doesn't mean, you know, I do see one more. I see these two spots. I may want to try to add organically one more white spot. And since they're all the same size, what I may want to do is bring back, maybe make one a little smaller. I'm not afraid to try things on a painting. I'm not afraid to take risks. You may get a different painting 
than what you think. And you may think you've ruined the painting. But what you learn along the way when you take risks is so much more important than if you don't take the risk. That's just my opinion. Let me cover this up a little bit. So, is that done? Well, right now it is. What I'm seeing, though, in these last two, to be honest, is not a lot of the metallic came through. Here I just got done saying I think it's done. And I may, now this is, that took it a little different direction. I'm adding more swirls, but I have a lot of line work going on in here. And that's a little raised, but I, I, I like that. I think I had lost some of the copper looking metallic. So let's bring that other one over. But you know what? You're the artist on your work. And if you think a painting is done and then you come back and say, oh, no, it's not done. That's, that's, um, you're the artist. So let's take a look at this one. And I need some more bronze in here. Maybe I will add. Not, the swirls aren't as pronounced as the other one. Maybe some lines. I still need to let that dry. Okay, so I brought in some copper. Well, it's the bronze. So, let's bring my mat up. Now, this is a mat, what I call my traveling mat. It's It's got some marks on it, so I use it in my studio. I can still... I could still use it to see my work, but it's not one that I would sell. So at this point, is this painting done? Well, I'm gonna let that dry and I... So I wanted to pop in here and just show you the three of them completed, um, pulled back up. So I was able to take a picture of them at a little better angle. And you can see where I have gone in with the charcoal, both the white and the black, and gone over some of those marks I said I was going to do. And I like them. I'm pleased with the way they turned out. And um, I personally would hang these in my home. So I hope you enjoyed this. You can stop here now. Um, if you want to know more about the membership, I'm going to talk about that in just a second in case you want to join that. Um, so thank you for joining me. And if you want to know more about the membership, hang on, and I'm going to talk about that in one second. Well, if you stayed this far, then you're interested in the membership. At least you have some curiosity. So the membership is two levels, and it's new to YouTube, and it's new to me. So um, I'm going to grow this as we go, but there's already a lot out there. There are two levels to my membership, and that's the supporter and the artisan. And the supporter is $1.99 a month, and I already have several supporters, and um, I'm very grateful for those. It helps me build my channel and helps me th with funds to get more supplies. The second level is the artisan, and the artisan is $9.99 a month, and um, you'll always stay that i don't know if that will grow as i grow what i'm going to be putting on the channel but the artisan is where we're going to really dive in as abstract artists and there are some videos out there already we've already talked about uh, finding your voice and there's going to be a second video on that with a little bit of homework so it's not just um listen to me talk it's it's to help you grow as an artist in your journey. Um, abstract art is different than regular, well, abstract um, expressionism is different than regular, even abstract art. 
and there's a lot to it. And I have found that the traditional methods of composition and color and textures and all that, if you want your abstracts to level up and you want to increase in what you're doing in your abstracts, then there's some areas that you need to know about and you need to practice on because you need to increase what you're doing in your journey. The traditional abstract or traditional compositions out there, they're great, but they're primarily, I feel, um, for those that are not doing abstract expressionism. Where there's And expressionism is more about there's no object in there. You can have objects in there, but it's like another term for it. It's non-objective. So in the abstract, um, in the artisan level, we're going to be talking about composition. We're going to be talking about uh, composition that's outside the traditional levels so that you'll understand how to um, look at your artwork and know what's wrong with it and how to fix it. And this takes practice. And this takes just knowing some simple um, things that will help you get there. And then I want to talk about like the elements of art. And right now I'm up to like maybe eight or nine. And I don't know if we're going to hit on one a month with some homework or if we're going to hit on um, like one area and have several months. But I hope to take everything I have learned and I'm still learning as an artist from all the training I've done, all the abstracts that I've done personally, and give that back to you. I can't do it on my main channel because it's too much information. Another benefit as an artisan is I hope to be able to give you handouts, which you can pull off of PayHip as a download for free. And it will be kind of like a lesson plan of what I'm teaching or showing um, so that you don't have to just, it's not something that you're going to grasp just listening to me for an hour or so and then understand it. It's going to be something that you're going to have to take away and practice with. So I don't want to go too long-winded, but the buttons are, here's what I've learned, because this is new with YouTube. Uh, the best way to join is from a computer. You can really find it there. It's on the main page. It's right beside my name. It's a join button. And I think within the video, it's by the subscribe button or unsubscribe, but I hope you're subscribed. I believe that you can see it both if you're subscribed or unsubscribed, but I've had some tell me that you have to be a subscribed uh, individual to find the join button. I know people with an Android have found it on their Samsung. I got a screenshot from someone that showed me where the join button is on their phone. Those with an iPhone or iPad, for some reason, YouTube has not opened up that possibility yet. I've sent them messages. Hopefully they'll fix that because there's a lot of iPhone users. <coughs> so if you're on an iPhone or iPad and you cannot find the join button because YouTube hasn't fixed that, if you can get to a computer, you can find the join. And then once you join, you'll see the different um, things that you get. And I think we're just going to have fun. And it's um, you can stop anytime. And I know there's things that go on in people's lives that at some point you may have to stop the program. I will understand that. But um, I just wanted to go into more depth about the program. And I will be putting out information as I grow about uh, more things that can be offered. But I didn't want to make this too long. But thank you for listening to me. I hope you join me over there. Um, so we can have some fun and um, I can share with you the things that I've learned as an abstract artist myself. I will see.